In this video, we're going to create our first machine blueprint in V-Realize Automation 8. Let's get started. Hi everyone, I'm Brian Watchers from Bavork. If this is your first time here and you want to learn about automating, programming, and monitoring in VMware environments, you're in the right place. Start now by subscribing and click the bell so that you don't miss a thing. Welcome to the second part in this eight-part video series. If you haven't already watched the first video, take a look at the playlist up there where you can find links to all eight videos. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, as you'll recall from the previous video, we left off having logged into VRI's Automation 8. We actually opened up three tabs in our web browser and logged into Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, and Orchestrator. Let's jump back into the lab environment and pick up where we left off. All right, now that we're back in the lab, you can see again the three tabs where I'm logged into Cloud Assembly, Service Broker, and Orchestrator. But what are these three services? For right now, let's think of Cloud Assembly as the place that an administrator would go to create blueprints. For instance, here, as you can see, I have a number of different blueprints. So think of Cloud Assembly as the place where an administrator or somebody you appoint goes to create blueprints that users can request from the self-service catalog. On the other hand, Service Broker is designed primarily with the end users in mind. The Service Broker is where we're going to have end users logging in and see the service catalog. As you can see here right now, I'm on the catalog tab and we're looking at our service catalog which right now is regrettably empty. So we need to get to work. Before we go any further though, there's one more tab, which is for vRealize Orchestrator. vRealize Orchestrator is, uh, for our purposes in this video series, is the thing that's going to allow us to do amazing things. Um, that's, a, again, a grand definition. Uh, to make it a little more practical, VRI's Orchestrator is a graphically oriented programming environment in which we can automate activities throughout our entire IT infrastructure. We'll find out more as this video series and other videos progress exactly what I mean by that. But for right now, just think of Orchestrator as a thing that's going to do awesome stuff for us. Okay, so... Let's go over to Cloud Assembly. Again, remember, that's where the blueprint designers are going to go to create their blueprints. And as you can see, I already have some blueprints. In future videos, I'll show you how to create blueprints from scratch. But what I'm going to do is take an existing blueprint, this one here called VMW-Photon OS. Uh, by the way, if you haven't heard of Photon OS, Photon OS is a Linux distribution from VMware. Um, this blueprint deploys a single vSphere virtual machine and installs Photon OS into that virtual machine. Now, rather than create a blueprint from scratch, again, I'm going to select this existing blueprint and I'm going to clone it. As you can see here, I'm being asked, what do I want to call my blueprint? Well, to make it really clear that this is my blueprint, I'm going to call it my blueprint. Let me fix that little typo there. There we go, my blueprint. And for the description of this blueprint, I'll type something like, this is an example blueprint. Okay, next, I need to pick a project. And as you can see, I have several different projects defined, but what are these things called projects? If you're already familiar with VRI's Automation 7 and are familiar with the concept of business groups in VRA 7, these things called projects are like business groups. But for the rest of us, if you're new to VRI's Automation 8, these things called projects allow us to, to find groups of users that we want to empower to deploy machines and other items from these blueprints in VRI's Automation 8. So each project is a collection of users that we specify that are allowed to build machines on various platforms that we pick, such as vSphere, AWS, Azure, GCP, and VMware Cloud on AWS. Now for our purposes here, we're going to keep this simpler and simply work with the blueprint that's deploying 
a VM into vSphere. All right, so continuing onwards here, as you can see, I have a bunch of different business groups to find. And for our purposes throughout these videos, I'm going to be choosing VMW-ENG, uh, which is a project that I've created for, for a particular department. You can create projects for departments. You can create your uh, projects based on um, divisions of your company, or perhaps your organizational structure involves different lines of business. Or maybe your organizational structure is completely different. Maybe you're not even a company. But whatever the organizing structure is within wherever it is you're installing VRI's Automation 8, that's what's going to drive your projects. Now, the next thing I need to do if I'm going to clone an existing blueprint is to pick which version of that blueprint I want to clone. As we're going to find out here shortly, any of our blueprints can have multiple versions. This particular blueprint that I'm cloning has a version one, a version two, and current draft is the blueprint in its current state as we're working on it. So I want the latest and greatest, therefore I'm going to choose current draft. And to actually begin the cloning, I'll click clone. And just like that, we have a new blueprint that's a, a essentially a complete copy of the VMW Photon OS blueprint. So let's actually take a look at this blueprint to see what it's doing. So I select the blueprint and I'm taken into the blueprint designer. Over here on the left side, you have a bunch of different components that you can drag into this middle section. The middle section is our design canvas where we're going to build up our blueprint. But on the left side, we have all the different types of components that you can add to a blueprint. So up above was cloud agnostic components. Uh, right now we're looking at vSphere components, NSX components, AWS, GCP, um, configuration management, Azure, and other goodies, other components are um, through out this massive list here, enabling us to create blueprints that can do all sorts of amazing things. But for our purposes here, what we've done in this blueprint is to drag out a machine component and a network component. And as we added each of those over here on the right side, where we have something called the YAML editor, YAML is the name of the language that blueprints are written in. But as we dragged in new components into our blueprint, such as this machine, VRise Automation automatically inserted code for us. So much of the work is already done for us. Uh, what we do when we create blueprints is perhaps um, tinker around with what's in here and change it to suit our own unique needs. So for our purposes here, uh, this blueprint looks great for our purposes. Again, it's going to deploy a machine. It's going to call the machine. The host name of the machine is going to be Photon OS. Obviously, if we want to, we can set up the blueprint to generate different names for uh, subsequent deployments from the same blueprint. In this case, it's just going to keep deploying a machine. Uh, each time it'll deploy a machine and each time it'll have the same name. But we can say what, with through this thing called an image mapping, we can say what we want installed in the machine. In this case here, as I said before, we're going to install Photon OS. We're going to deploy a small VM through something called a flavor mapping. Uh, I would have called them size mappings because flavor mappings allow us to do t-shirt sizing like I showed you in the previous video. And this other component here is a network component. And over on the right side in our YAML code, you can see information in the, the blueprint code that defines how that network is going to behave. For instance, is this a, an existing vSphere network? In this case, it is. Or it might be an existing NSX network, or it could be a dynamically created NSX network. There's lots of flexibility in terms of these network components, machine components, disk components, and so forth. But we're not here to talk about blueprints per se. Rather, I just wanted to show you a blueprint and how we could use this blueprint to empower our users through the self-service catalog to deploy machines. So here in Cloud Assembly, I'm going to go to this here test button. First of all, to make certain our blueprint's working correctly, I'll click test. And as you can see, it's testing out the blueprint. 
It's not actually deploying machines. In a test, what we're doing is making certain that uh, can we find that image? Can we um, find the definition of what this small VM size means? Can we find a platform on which to build the machine? Those are the types of things that are going on in this test. And if you're really interested, if there was a problem, instead of having a green check mark here, uh, it would have a red X and we could click on the line here, which would highlight the code up above in the YAML editor, actually I should say over on the right, so that we could find any problems that may exist. Or if we want even more detailed information, we can click on provisioning diagram, which brings up a provisioning diagram. There it is. Uh, if I scroll down, you can see that the provisioning diagram is showing us what VRA is going through as it decides, can I actually build this thing? So uh, the first part it looks at is the request itself. That looks good. The second part says, okay, what project are we deploying this machine into? Again, we're going to use the VMW-ENG project in this case. And then here we see it picking which network profile. And if we want even more detail, we can go into dev mode to get even more info. And if we want to, we can even click on this generate JSON button. Uh, JSON's the name of a, it actually stands for JavaScript object notation. JSON is a uh, industry standard way of encoding information such as information about, uh, in this case, it's information about what's going on in this test deployment. If I wanted to, I could save that file and I could open it up in a text editor or do all sorts of things with it. So we're not here though to talk about all that. What we're here to do is actually see this blueprint in action. Well, earlier in the previous video, I went to a catalog tab to request a deployment. But in this case here, there is no catalog tab because the catalog tab is in service broker. In Cloud Assembly, there's no catalog tab. Remember, uh, in Cloud Assembly, the, the point of Cloud Assembly is to help the Blueprint designers design their blueprints. Now, the Blueprint designer, he or she wants to, while they're looking at the Blueprint, can dismiss that test window that we saw before and actually deploy from within the Blueprint designer. But what we're going to be doing here shortly is uh, transferring this Blueprint from Cloud Assembly into Service Broker. But for right now, let's actually do a deployment from within Cloud Assembly. So I'll click the Deploy button. And every time you deploy from a machine blueprint, it's going to ask you things like, are you trying to create a new deployment? So are you deploying new machines? Or maybe we want to update an existing deployment and the machines in it. Every time you deploy from a machine blueprint, it's going to ask you, what do you want to call your deployment? I'm going to call my deployment my VM. Uh, it wants to know which version of the blueprint you want to deploy from. So I'm going to choose, actually, I haven't even saved any versions yet. All I have is the, the, the working draft right now, the current draft. So I'll select that. And again, I could type a description like blah, blah, blah. Again, fix my blunderous typo there. But you'll notice here in Cloud Assembly that the size dropdown list that I showed you before doesn't appear at all. And that's because when you want to improve the, the end user experience and add um, inputs that are customized, that's something that you do in the service broker. So since I don't have that dropdown list, I can't make it dynamic and I need to, in effect, transfer or release is the word we actually use. I need to release this blueprint so that the Realize Automation Service Broker can work with it. So what I'm going to do here is cancel out of this deployment. Uh, by the way, you can in Cloud Assembly add inputs that would have shown up on that screen by modifying this input section here. We'll take a look at that input section in later videos, but even if you set up inputs here, uh, even though in Cloud Assembly you can create inputs and do things like create a statically defined dropdown list, you do not have the ability in Cloud Assembly to do the dynamic stuff that we came here to do. So what we need to do, as I said before, is release this blueprint 
so that we can use it in Service Broker. And the way we're going to do that is, well, in this case, we're going to have to first save a version of this blueprint. You cannot release the current draft. You have to have a version. Versions are what you can release. So let's see how to create a version. It's pretty straightforward. You just come down here and click the version button. And in the interface that comes up, you get to pick the version number that we're saving and type a description, type a, dis type a description. I'm going to type uh, something exciting like this is the initial version of this blueprint. If I wanted to supply even more details, I could put that here in this changelog section. But the crucial thing here is I need to release this version. Now you can actually release a, a blueprint version either here as you're creating the version or I'm going to intentionally leave this checkbox unchecked to show you the other place in a moment where you can release a version of a blueprint. Again, I could just check this checkbox now, but I'm intentionally not checking it. Instead, I'm going to click create. We'll end up with the new version of this blueprint. It'll be version number one, but it's still not released yet. So let me click create. And if you want to see what versions you have, you go to the version history link up here. Now, that version history link not only allows me to see the different versions over here on the left side, here's my versions, uh, it also allows me to see which versions have been released. Uh, currently, version one, the one that we just created, still says release, so it has not been released yet. We'll release it in a moment. And other things that you can do with this version history thing that's not related to this particular um, topic of dynamic drop down list, but we may as well show you this here is this diff tab allows us to see different versions of the blueprint side by side. So for instance, I can compare the current draft against uh, version one and see if there are any differences. So why don't we do that? So I'm going to compare version one. So I select version one and let's compare that against the current draft. And as you can see here, there are no differences because they're exactly the same. But if there had been differences, for instance, in the uh, blueprint code, you would see a side by side display of the YAML code for both versions of the blueprint so that you could see visually where differences are. It even color codes to let you know uh, lines in the blueprint code that have been added, removed or modified. But again, I'm not here to show you the difference mechanism. Instead, I came here to show you how to release a version. Now we already saw that you could release a version as you're making the version. If you didn't do that, you can simply find the version and click release. When you do so, it t tells you you're releasing version one. Are you sure you want to do this? If so, go ahead and type a description. It's already got my description in there. So I'm just going to click release. And now, my blueprint has been released so that Service Broker can make use of it. Join me in the next video where we'll dive into Service Broker.